And we are live. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. And if you're watching right now, uh, you're probably aware we've had some technical difficulties. We normally would have started about an hour earlier now. Uh, I made about six or seven attempts and uh, we kept on having computer failure, so thankfully uh, Brother Matthias uh, saw I was having a problem and contacted me and rescued us so that uh, we're able to uh, have the program tonight. Uh, but uh, as Renee and Jason and I, were, as we're looking at the screen, everything looks different to us. It's a totally different look that we're trying to adjust to. We'll do the best we can. But Yes, 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 yes. The devil was busy tonight, Luke. Yes. Busy tonight. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We can That's right. Hey, I got mine. Got mine too. Forgiven. All right. Forgiven. This was uh, the other shirt that my my buddy sent me from England. Fantastic. Where's and then my... you see my, you know, Jesus yeah. plus nothing, perfected forever. Yeah, yeah, Jesus plus nothing. It's like Where's my merch? Okay, what? let's get started. Let's my get a quick introduction here. Uh, uh, Brother Cripps has been patiently just uh, waiting and listening. So, uh, Brother Cripps, you go first. Uh, just say hi to everybody. Tell them about your channel, and then we'll get started uh, after the introductions. Sure, I'll make it super quick. Uh, my name is Jason Cripps. I'm part of a channel called True Story Live. comes on Sunday nights at 9 p.m., and we like to have discussions and welcome everyone to the table without division, even if we disagree. And I'm glad to be a part of this program every Wednesday night, and uh, because of all the technical difficulties, we're still here, and um, I'll keep it short. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. All right. Thank you, brother. And uh, Renee? Uh, someone might not know who you are. Uh, I call you the untwisted sister. Maybe you can tell them why. Yes. Hey, guys. Renee Rowland, channel of the same name. And uh, I am an evangelist. I contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. I am not ashamed of the free grace gospel of Christ. That salvation is free based on the work of Christ. Not anything we do, not how we live, not uh, changing our lives, not giving our lives to Christ, but receiving the truth that Christ gave his life for us. And uh, we can't pay uh, the death penalty for our sin because Christ already paid the death penalty for us. And that is the good news. It's uh, That penalty has been paid. So uh, what, what my specialty is, is untwisting scriptures that false teachers twist up to try to add some kind of merit to the gospel. And, and what's so subtle is that they preach works, yet will deny with everything in them that the works are works. So they'll redefine what believe and faith means. And we are here to bring it back to the simplicity that's in Christ. I'm so glad we, uh, we were able to get this fixed. Thanks again to Matthias for, or for helping us out tonight. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, I told Brother Matthias he's welcome to uh, uh, join the discussion if he wants to. He says he's busy working. So, but uh, Matthias, anytime you want to interject, feel free to do that. Um, all right. Let's get started. Uh, with, uh, Roman. Yeah. Yeah. There are people in the chat room. Uh, chat room. Uh, it looks like it's, you're busy in the chat room. Uh, someone post a comment right now and say uh, everything works see. great. Yeah, they can see us. I said we look cinematic. We're in widescreen. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Um, these Wednesday night Bible studies, we started off doing studies on famous sermons. Uh, you can see those uh, uh, studies in our uh, archives uh, for the Wednesday night Bible studies. Uh, and then we started working our way through the Pauline epistles. Uh, we're almost finished with the book of Romans now. I hope you go back and watch this study from the beginning of Romans chapter 1. And, but right now we're going to beginning uh, chapter 15. So let me read it, uh, and then I'll get everybody's thoughts. Um, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak 
and not to please ourselves. Uh, we did comment on that verse. Let me read it also in the Amplified. Now we who are strong in our convictions and faith ought to be patiently put up with the weakness of those who are not strong and not just please ourselves. Okay, Sister Renee. Yeah, uh, I again, I like the fact that he uses the word infirmities here because it doesn't always mean sick. It can mean like a weakness in our character or a weakness in our flesh, uh, a weakness in our mind or in the strength of our faith. And in this particular context, we can see, you know, like you said last week, chapter uh, chapters uh, often cut between a thought that is still continuing from the prior verse. So in this case, it was about eating or not eating certain meats, adhering to the Levitical laws, food laws. And uh, some still believed that they had to maintain uh, these uh, kosher and other food laws of Israel, abstaining from certain meats and so forth. Uh, and also maybe abstaining from uh, wine. So what they're, the context here is if a person's faith is weak in the sense that they don't understand the liberty or the freedom they have in Christ, that all things are permissible as long as it's done with thanksgiving unto God, that nothing is unclean because if you pray over it as the blessing and the word of God that cleanses it that makes it holy and righteous for us and to eat and acceptable uh but if someone is still caught up in it and feels guilt or their conscience is messed up if they eat it well now if they do eat it it is sin to them because whatsoever is not of faith is sin so it says if a person is weak in the faith like that not understanding the strength of of the freedom we have that, you know, we're not under any condemnation over these things. It's not any more pleasing to God to eat that way or to not eat that way. Uh, so we are to care more about not offending the weaker brother. So we should, even though we're free to eat or drink what we want, if it offends that person, we should abstain from doing it because it's not worth offending our brother or causing our brother to stumble. You know, that it's so when it says right here, we then that are strong, meaning we are secure in our freedom and understand that we're free to do all things like that. We can eat what we want. Uh, we ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, the weakness in their faith. They're they're um, thinking that they still must do these things uh, as if it's more pleasing to God. Uh, and so we bear that infirmity. We bear their weakness uh, rather than impose our freedom upon them because we don't want them sinning by doing something against their conscience. That says, blessed is the man uh, who does not condemn that which he allows. So if you're going to do something, don't condemn yourself over it. You should have a free conscience about it. So if they don't, we should take the hit. We should be the one that says, I'm going to care more about this brother who is a little weaker in the faith. And I'm going to respect that it offends him when I, when I eat these things so that I'm going to not eat them in front of him so that we don't call it last week. I think the words were doubtful disputations, right? So we don't want to get arguments and doubtful disputations, anything that would hurt a person's faith, or shake it up. It's just not worth it. So we need to bear their weakness, carry that burden for them. Yeah. Uh, and as I said uh, last week, we we didn't quit after uh, the last verse in the last chapter. We went ahead and read one verse, this verse uh, last week. And I made the point that uh, uh, there were no chapter divisions in the original writings. And a lot of times people draw up put too much into the divi chapter divisions, thinking, not realizing that the thoughts are being continued, even though it's a new chapter. And so Brother Cripps, it, uh, I think that uh, it'd be easy for a person to misunderstand this verse 
if they're not keeping in contact with the previous chapter, they could easily think this is talking about doubting your, your faith in salvation. But as Renee said, this is really talking about uh, having a, worrying about uh, these uh, these legalistic questions that were there arguing about about uh, uh, dietary laws and so on. Brother Cripps? Absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out, too. And um, I, if you hadn't said it, I was going to bring up the chapter breaks thing again, based on your comment from last week, because um, it is important to to know that. And what I like uh, about this particular uh, channel and all the things that you do is that you do not cherry pick scriptures. The purpose of going through the chapter and verse uh, literally one by one, sometimes you might give two or three if they're completing a thought. Um, but we're trying to do it in context. We don't want to cherry pick scriptures. So you have Renee starting out by going back to last week and and, and putting it into context, then uh, Brother Luke doing that. So I don't need to do any more, but I, I'm glad that you did that. Um, so having read the verse last week, uh, if you haven't gone and listened to last week's, definitely uh, please do, because it sets up this and, and uh, gets us into the place where we are. Uh, so another word for bear I don't need to read the the verse again, but the, we ought to bear the infirmities. When uh, when Renee was talking, I kept getting the idea of put up with, put up with, and that's a paraphrase on my part. We put up with the infirmities of, of the weak. Um, bear is even a stronger word. We carry them. We carry the infirmities. We carry them on us. And uh, in verse three, it's going to talk more about how it relates to Christ. But I just want to say as a teaser. Christ is the example for us. Didn't he bear our infirmities on the cross? Isn't he the example for us of what we should do for our, our brothers and sisters who aren't, they don't have the same level the, of belief, and I shouldn't have said level. They don't have the same um, aspect or understanding or perception of the grace that we have in Christ, and we should bear that. We should, we should put up with that. We should have long suffering about that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that always um, um, I, I think it, it's not only very profound to me, but it's also very important to get this point in that all the problems that we are dealing with in the current time of church history, uh, dealing with the legalism uh, of probably 90% of all professing Christians are legalists. That means that they they think that following some kind of religious laws of a system and do's and don'ts uh, is somehow uh, factors into one's salvation. And uh, almost every Christian, you ask them, are you certain you're going to go to heaven? And if you are, why? They almost always say, well, uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to follow all the commandments and and the golden rule, they think that uh, their ability to perform uh, will determine their salvation. And uh, this problem is the number one problem uh, in Christendom today, not in the church, because Christendom uh, is a term that means comprehensively, the, the total in totality, every person who identifies themselves as some kind of a Christian. Yes. But of all those people who name Jesus and think of themselves as a Christian, uh, only a tiny little fraction of them are what we call biblical Christians. A Christian is someone who is relying on Christ completely for their salvation and realizing that uh, it's about Christ and not about them. Yeah. Um, so uh, because, uh, uh, because this is a problem today that we're dealing with, it's comforting to me to know that when Paul wrote much of his writings is dealing with the same problems that persisted throughout church history and still plague us today. The idea that these dietary laws have to be followed. That was the subject really in the previous chapter. This is the, uh, the, the subject, the question of just make you have a dispute. Yes. Who is your pain management doctor? Okay. Cybel. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you need pain management, my doctor is Dr. Cybel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so, uh, I, and it's true uh, that uh, probably any problem that we're, de we're, we're dealing with in the church right now, any controversy, uh, you'll, if, if when you study the epistles and, and the book of Acts, you'll, you'll find out that uh, uh, these problems are ancient. 
it, it's never been completely resolved. They've persisted for 2,000 years now. Um, all right, any more on that point before I read another verse? All right, then. Let's go to uh, verse 2. KJV says, Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Oh, Renee, sort out this KJV for me, please. Give me one second here. I'm taking my medication real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One second. Dry church. We're, we're all medicated over here. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what? how far should I go? Uh, verse two and three. Okay. So let me get on there. I, I got a little bit of a fever starting, so I had to take some out of proof. No. Uh, no, no, no. I'm telling no. you, the devil's busy tonight. I'm telling you, tried to shut that down. Now it's a fever just a hip, you tea chatter. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Uh, so in any case, the, the hate that we had for one another all fell on Christ. That's what it seems like here. So um, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So it sounds like they're saying the ones that hated God, uh, that sin fell upon Christ. Because um, he bore there, just like we are to bear the infirmities of the weak. Um, we he, he there, It's showing an example, I think, um, of Christ bearing that weight upon himself for christ even pleased not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me so it's just saying if he can carry that weight we can surely carry the little weight of of you know uh sacrificing uh what we desire to eat in order to edify a brother and to keep keep peace Oh wow! You you keep on bringing this context, sister. What what do you think context is What's so? What's that important? all about, man? Context, context, context. Not yeah. cherry picking. Yeah, brother Cripps, uh, let me read those two verses in the Amplified for and, and then get your thoughts. Fantastic. Let each one of us make it a practice to please his neighbor for his good, to build him up spiritually, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written in the scriptures, the reproaches of those who reproached you, the father, fell on me, the son. Wow. See, I, I, I'm glad because to me, when I read it in the KJV, it was like a, a it was like a Rubik's cube. <laughs> Renee sorted it out, but the Amplified made it clear to me. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the teaser that I said earlier um, that Jesus is the example, and this uh, Paul bears that out in this verse. He's saying in the first one, um, first making the point about the way that we should treat our neighbors, and this refers to what Jesus said. Uh, the question was asked, who is my neighbor? And the answer to that is everyone is your neighbor, regardless of whether they're a believer or not. And you, we consider everyone our neighbor. So he's saying it's for the good of ed edification for the brother, so you have uh, the first verse, which we went over, bear the infirmities. And then the second verse is saying uh, how we're, we're putting our neighbor above ourselves in this particular area. And it's because we're stronger. We can do that. And uh, again, the example for us is Christ, who was strong enough to bear our infirmities. What one of us could have done that? None of us. None of us could bear the infirmities of others. Uh, so Jesus did it as written in scripture. He took the reproaches. He took the infirmities of all of us on himself, uh, the reproaches against God on himself, which is Christ. Um, actually, the Amplified does do a good job of, uh, of putting it out there, but Renee did, did a good job as well. So if it were a Rub Rubik's Cube, then we, we got all the colors matching. I think that's the goal. Yeah. 
Um, you know, it, it, it really makes me uh, humbling, humbles me when I think of a verse like this, and, and then I think of all of the cases where Jesus set an example for us. Uh, one of the great examples, uh, obviously, is on the cross, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they're doing, as he's in such agony and dying. Uh, but uh, uh, something that's more practical for us every day, the verse we're talking about here, and also when Jesus washed the feet of the apostles. And, um, um, you know, I, Jesus said that, uh, do not think that I came to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. So he tells us he came, where did he, he came down from heaven, occupied a human body, as, as a, uh, became a man, so that he could die, uh, give his life as a ransom for us, a payment to set us free from condemnation. Uh, but he says he came to serve, not to be served. And then, he, and he washed the feet of the apostles to give us this example of being a servant. Now, I've said many times that um, every believer, at the moment of their faith, uh, they are, uh, their, their standing has changed. They're, they, they're standing before God as they're a child of God now. They're righteous, they're sanctified, they're set apart. God considers you holy, it's settled, you're going to heaven. Don't worry about it ever again. Uh, but I say that at that moment in time, you, you just punch the time clock and you clocked in and you're on, you're on the payroll and, and now you, you're supposed to get busy working, building up treasures in heaven, as Jesus said. And so we're all called to serve, to do some kind of work for the cause of Christ. And uh, we're, the, Paul says that the body of Christ, which is the church, is made up of many parts. We all, all play the same part. So... Uh, we need to be willing to pitch in wherever we're needed, but we all have special gifts. And, and if you don't know your calling, get busy right now, praying every day, Lord, reveal to me my calling. What is my place in the church? What am I called to do? What gifts have you given me, special talents for uh, the, the cause of Christ to serve uh, God and, and, uh, and our neighbors? Um, so the example of serving and humility, the, being a humble servant by washing the feet. And uh, then, then in these verses here, it brings to my mind the same, same thing. It says, uh, let each one of us make it a practice to please his neighbor for his good, to build him up spiritually. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written in the scriptures, the reproaches of those who reproached you, God the Father, fell on me, the Son. So uh, verses like that, to me, are just very, very humbling, very, very compelling and convicting in my spirit to tell me, am I being a humble servant? And Amen. that's a question that we, we, we should all be asking ourselves. Yes. Um, any more on those on verses one through three before I move on? No, sir. That's good stuff. Okay. Uh, all right, then. Um, I'm going to go to verse uh, four now. Renee, I'll let you go first on this. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Yes. <clears throat> okay. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So it's saying all the things, the inspired word of God were written in a way that they are in samples for us to fulfill so we can see the shadows the types and shadows of jesus and god's plan of salvation from the foundation of the world that all of these things can point to and confirm christ and and that uh this uh new covenant and the mystery of the gentiles being grafted in would be revealed 
as the Old Testament conceals these things in the New Testament, you know, is the Old Testament revealed. So it says that we were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. See, it confirms the hope we have in Christ because just like we see Cain and Abel, Abel offered the blood of the lamb and uh, he was accepted, but Cain tried to offer his works and he wasn't. We see Adam and Eve trying to cover their sin with works, their fig leaves. That's a representation of self-righteousness. They tried to cover their sin their own way, but God slew an animal and covered them in skins, which I believe was a lamb, although it doesn't specifically say so. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. So um, you can see the man picking up sticks on the Sabbath being killed because that's a picture of us resting in Christ. You can see the people wandering in the wilderness uh, because they refused to enter into the rest of the promised land. So all of these things are examples and shadows of what Christ would do for us. And when we can see them written thousands, hundreds, and even thousands of years before um, Jesus even came, it just confirms that he is the promised one and the message of the cross is confirmed through the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures and the prophets. Jesus said something like, you seek the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life, but they are which testify of me or something like that. All right. Thank you. Uh, Brother Cripps? Uh, yeah, thanks, Renee. So all of the Old Testament scriptures are definitely there to, to bring us hope. A lot of people don't understand that. Uh, um, <laughs> something I haven't always understood. In fact, uh, when I was much younger, um, I didn't avoid the Old Testament, but um, I preferred to spend time in the New Testament, and I, I separated the two as if they weren't related. But as I grew, I learned how related they are. So this is just saying, uh, uh, verse 4 is just saying that all the things are written before, which is referring to everything written, uh, was written f for us to learn. And he's talking about the way we mature, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, the very scriptures that were written uh, for us, that we might have hope. Now, of course, we have hope when the actual physical representation of Christ, and he actually came and did what, uh, what he was prophesied to do. But anybody looking at the Old Testament, especially understanding that the shadow of Christ, the promise of the Messiah, was always there. It was always there. We can look up any, I would challenge anyone to pick any book of the Bible and not see the shadow of Christ, not see the coming Messiah. So all of those things are valuable and helpful in uh, giving us hope. And who doesn't need hope in this uh, broken, fallen world? I know that we all do. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm posting some more verses for you, Brother Cripps, here in the uh, little private chat space here. Thank you, sir. Okay, so you got the KJV. I'll put the Amplified in there in a minute. But um, the uh, the idea of uh, what was written in time, let me see, how is it written? For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. And in the Amplified, it says, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. Um, obviously, this is scripture, so it's true. But, you know, this is one verse among many that the hyper dispensationalists will use to prop up and, and uh, over divide the scriptures. And they will say that this verse is telling us that all those things that were written before Paul started writing uh, really uh, are insignificant uh, regarding salvation. Uh, uh, we can learn th things for us, but only Paul has the message of salvation. Ugh. The grace of God through faith alone in Christ alone, only Paul has that message. It was revealed to him, and it, he's the only one that we can learn about salvation from. 
So uh, it's really unfortunate how uh, people will uh, pull verses like this out of contact. I hope there's one uh, uh, brethren that uh, continues to post things on my videos um, uh, supporting this hyper dispensational and Paul only is uh, position. And uh, I've asked him to watch my playlist, Paul only is debunked. And uh, he says he watched a couple of videos, but he didn't watch the, all of it. He needs to watch it all. Everybody needs to watch it all because the positions put forward by the hyper dispensationalists and, and probably the most prominent the, uh, authority on it today that they go to is a, a man named Les Feldick. If you're watching Les Feldick, uh, I, I hope that you will also watch my videos that refute the teachings of Les Feldick because almost every premise that he teaches is easily refuted by scriptures. But this verse here, unfortunately, uh, Rene's right, Brother Cripps is right, the things that were written in the past before the, uh, the New Testament writings, and they'll even say that this applies, that Paul says, you know, even, even uh, not, not just uh, the law and the prophets, Paul's talking about any other writers like any of the apostles, only they would say this, Anything apart from what I wrote, Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Um, so, but uh, what he's really saying here is uh, anything that was written in the uh, law and the prophets um, was written for our learning. Uh, but as Rene pointed out, uh, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed within it. In pictures and shadows and the, the 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 saying goes on the new testament is the old testament revealed so i i have a playlist on this called uh the bloody trail pictures and shadows of jesus's blood atonement and there's probably at least 20 or 25 examples that we go through in a group discussion on this talking about all the things in the old testament that are um, the gospel message, but not in clear words, but in pictures and shadows of, of uh, and the first example, of course, is the uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, they realized they had a problem when they knew they were naked. Uh, and uh, they decided to solve the problem by doing their own work. They, they would work it out. They'd sew together some fig leaves and cover themselves. But God said, no, that's, that's not going to solve the problem. You cannot solve the problem with the labor of your own hands. You need me, God, to cover you, to provide the covering. So God slayed an animal, death happened, blood was shed, and the animal skins covered them, and God considered that to be the, the, the solution to their, their problem of nakedness. And that's one example of many in the Old Testament we can learn about this future solution to the problem of humanity and that is that that uh, we have a sin problem that's created a uh, uh, an alienation between man and god a separation a barrier that we can't have a relationship with god because we're sinners so that had to be dealt with and throughout history mankind tried to solve the problem on their own get sin out of their life become religious and even today people think that's the solution to the problem but all through the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we find that this, the solution is not possible through our own efforts. The solution only happens when we rely on Jesus to be our Savior or the solution to the sin problem. All right. Uh, any Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any more on that before we go to another verse? Okay. Uh, verse uh, 6. Uh, in the KJV says, uh, uh, I'll read it with five. It goes together. It says, now the God of patience. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got confused on what verse I was on. Um, verse five and six. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may be with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Renee? 
Yeah. All right. I'm going to read the one right behind it. Now, the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may be one mind and one mouth. Glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so eventually we want to, the, again, the context here is about uh, abstaining from certain foods and drink uh, and carrying the burden for people that are weak in the faith thinking that they still need to do these things for God to be pleased with them. But those in the flesh cannot please God. That's now you please God. So um, it's saying here that at some point we should, well, first of all, we need to be at peace with one another and bear each other's burdens. But uh, hopefully if we're patient and hear each other out, that we can come together with a like mind uh, on these issues. But until this is rectified and, uh, you know, the foundation cannot change. There's certain things that you have to agree on. Like, for instance, uh, the chat room, Jesus's divinity and eternality is not up for debate. The gospel is not up for debate. Repentance of sin, not up for debate. Uh, we are dealing with the subject at hand. So we can do this and discuss verses and even answer questions when we have a difference of opinion because iron sharpens iron uh, because we have the same foundation so we're able to show liberty and charity to one another on these issues but the ultimate goal is to hear each other out find out why we believe what we believe based on the scriptures being a good Berean and eventually come together in a single-mindedness yeah. on these issues because that we can glorify God when we act as the one body that God says we already are. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Brother Cripps, you want it in the, in the Amplified? Sure. Okay. Let me read five and six in the Amplified. Uh, it says, now may the God who gives endurance and who supplies encouragement mm. that, that you be of the same mind with one another, according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord, you may with one voice glorify and praise and honor the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. There's, there's several things in these two verses. The first thing is, and it warms my heart and it should warm everyone's heart and and using the King James uh, version first, the God of patience and consolation, consoling us. The Holy Spirit consoles us. He comforts us. He's called the comforter. He's not the accuser. He's not the one that comes and tells us, you're living in sin. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. No, the, the God that we serve um, treats us with patience and consolation and the Amplified uh, uh, what did the Amplified endurance and what else, Brother Luke? Uh, it says, um, uh, it says, gives endurance and supplies encouragement. Encouragement, thank you. Encouragement and consolation are synonyms, uh, but encouragement is a verb. Uh, so in the verses above, it's telling us to do that with our, our, our neighbors, you know, encourage them, hold them up, bear their burdens. And then he uses Jesus as an example. Didn't he do that uh, for us? And I added uh, on the cross, but I believe that's what, what Paul's referring to is what he did for us. And then the other part is so important. And I, I hope that people can understand that. And uh, Paul talks about this throughout all of his epistles in talking about this one, be of one mind, a singular mind, a body has only one mind, right? Um, it has two arms and two legs uh, and lots of toes and, and, and fingers, but it has one mind. We should all be in that place, one mouth glorify God. We should all be saying the similar things. We shouldn't we shouldn't be divided and, and, and spread out with all these different ways of, of uh, believing and serving. We should be of one mind. And as Brother Luke was uh, earlier making the difference between Christ Christendom and being a Christian, 
uh, all of Christianity or what is perceived to be Christianity and the true body of Christ, the true body of Christ is in one mind. But it gets confusing because you're hearing all the other denominations and all the false gospels out there. So it's hard for the world to look at us and see the difference between Christians and those that are actually in the true body of Christ and everyone else that's all lumped into the same category, and it shouldn't be like that. So those of us in the body, be of one mind. Um, so, so important. And I, I so hate division and derision, and um, I just wish that, that we could all be in that place of, uh, of peace and understanding and lifting each other up and uh, follow God's example of, being, uh, of consoling each other and be like-minded. Yeah, I, I'm looking in the chat room, and, and, and someone made a comment that uh, Brother Michael, uh, Ultimate Mordecai, made a video about uh, praying for those who are uh, near suicide, uh, and we should. Uh, uh, but it makes me realize that uh, because of the technical problems we had tonight, I forgot to send him the link. In fact, I didn't send the link to anybody tonight. I had to, Matthias had to do that for me. Uh, uh, but... Uh, so uh, if uh, Brother Michael is listening, I'm, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I forgot to send you, or didn't send you the link. So that's the reason why. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he would be available to join us tonight, but he's always invited every Wednesday and Sunday. Um, okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me read uh, the next verse here. Uh, verse uh, 7 in the KJV says, uh, Oh, by the way, let me talk about five and six for a second. I forgot. Uh, you know, being of one mind, glorifying God and, and uh, being like-minded, uh, this is kind of, it's kind of reminding me of, of the creed uh, the, of our uh, congregation. Uh, some people, if you're new here, you might not know this, but we... Uh, we, we rely on the scriptures for uh, all of our uh, understanding and, and truth, uh, but as an operating system, let's say a principle to, to, to function, a way of functioning in the church, we, we have adopted this creed in, um, in essentials unity. And so this is being of one mind, like this verse says, we need to be of one mind. And I can see that Paul is saying this, look, let's all be of one mind. And of course, about what? Well, who Jesus is and how we get saved. Okay. Jesus is God Almighty, not just a man. And we get saved because of uh, what he did for us and his promise of eternal life, uh, not because of our efforts. Uh, and, uh, and when we're saved, we're saved permanently. It can't ever be undone. Uh, so these are the essentials, and we unite, we're of one mind, everybody in the congregation, and Paul was one of that unity on those same doctrines. But then Paul is also saying on non-essentials, like diet, let's not try to impose diet on others. Instead, let's try to be empathetic and understand other people's things and some the, the levels of maturity and and. and uh, so the, the last chapter in this chapter is talking about uh, the liberty we have in these dietary laws and also the, uh, the, uh, the teaching that we should be uh, understanding of those that don't have, uh, you know, as clear of understanding as we do about these things. Um, all right. Uh, the next verse uh, is in the KJB is uh, seven. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Uh, I'll read 8, 2, since there's a 9. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Renee, some people are concerned that you're uh, maybe hurting too much to even participate. Uh, so let me just ask you if, if, uh, if you're, if, 
Thanks. You're in just too much pain to comment. Uh, if that's the case, then let's let, let, let us know. Uh, well, I just took ibuprofen. I just don't know how long it takes to get rid of the fever. Uh, so uh, I did want to comment on this, though, if I could. Okay. Uh, wherefore, receive you one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. And this next verse is so important because today I was talking with my son's aunt, Brooke in the car on the way back from my spine specialist and uh i was so um sad that so many people are pitting paul against jesus as if they preach something different and uh uh they don't understand what what was going on there is jesus is showing them they're asking hey how can i uh be saved by the law tell me what i got to do my works by the law that I got to do. And it gives them ridiculously high standards, which should have, uh, it says the law was given to stop our mouths, make us guilty before God to be a schoolmaster, to bring us unto Christ, you know, uh, so that every mouth may be stopped and all become guilty before God. But even the rich young ruler went away sad. Uh, Jesus tried to show him, Hey, you said you kept all these laws since your youth, but you didn't even keep the first one that you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, because you're you're loving your your money. So uh, unfortunately, people don't see that. And this verse here explains that Jesus came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is said a couple of times. It is to confirm the promises made to the fathers, to offer the kingdom for them, the kingdom now, which they rejected. Uh and uh it, it was a minister of the circumcision so he was sent to israel so it says now i say that jesus christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of god to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and in many places jesus confirms that uh all of the law and the prophets point to the fact that he would suffer the suffering servant and would save the world through his shed blood and that all of the animal sacrifices and the Passover, all of that is pointing to him. So I, I'm glad that it says um, is clarifying yet again, that he was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. Uh, and you still hear preachers today. Uh, one of them that Colin Michael gentleman took the verse, you know, love love god with all your heart soul and mind and i'm thinking he really thinks he does that like that that should have made anybody completely guilty yep uh but he said all these i've kept since my youth really you know uh but jesus is clear when he says this is the work of god that you believe on he whom he has sent mm -hmm. and so he is uh uh trying to offer israel um uh, salvation by grace uh, and for him to rule a kingdom and they are rejecting him. So um, uh, that's what we see happening here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just wanted to confirm that this verse yet again confirms who Jesus came for. He even told the disciples, don't go into the Gentiles, only go to the houses of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Every, every time that's what he came for. And then he told the, the lady, the pagan lady, you know, uh, hey, her daughter had a devil. And he and he said, you don't take the, the bread from the children and toss it to the dogs. But she said, hey, even the dogs get scraps left over. So we know it was to be offered to them first. So this verse is very important about um, uh, receiving one another. Um, and uh, it says, wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of of god so that's that's what i think that's referring to all right okay i'm eager on this play well brother cripps go ahead tell us your thoughts on these plays you know what i'm gonna pass it along to you just just to stay in line with what the verse is saying edify each other lift each other up if you're raring to go then let's uh, do an example of that go right ahead sir right. okay uh if you know me very well you know that i'm quite uh passionate about a, a few things that really really bother me and this church of jesus christ is uh, an absolute mess today 
and from the beginning. It's been a mess. It continues to be a mess. Thankfully, thankfully, we have a little remnant of people who understand the, the basic essentials correctly and and uh, and then give freedom on uh, on uh, all the other subjects in the Bible. But uh, overall, there's just a lot of confusion and extremes, hyper this and hyper that. Mm. Hyper means you take an idea too far. One hand, a group of people say you can't, uh, nothing in the Bible matters except for the red letters. And if you don't know what that means, that uh, many Bibles, the publishers decided that the words in the Bible that were actually spoken by Jesus out of Jesus' own mouth, that they publish them in red ink instead of black. So it's easy to recognize. Those are the words of Jesus. And there's a large group of people. They're the red leather believers. And they think that nothing else matters except the, the words of Jesus himself. Amen. Um, and, and some of these people, they even hate the apostle Paul. And, uh, and, and even he would, Paul was accused in his epistles. You see a, a, a record in, in the book of Acts of him being called a false apostle. Mm -hmm. and, and today this argument persists, people thinking Paul is a false apostle. Why? Because he says, don't add any religious works to the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, these people are so uh, ref they're refusing to accept the grace of God, pure, unadulterated grace, and they got to add their filthy uh, rag works uh, to it and 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 spoil it. Yep. Um, but and then you got another on the other end of the spectrum. You got, uh, got people who are actually saying the red letters are don't ignore those. The words of Jesus can't save anybody. Mm. Even the, the, the Gospel of John, you can't get saved by reading the Gospel of John. And forget about Peter. No, you, only Paul. And they elevate Paul above all the apostles, and they even elevate Paul above Jesus in the respect that they say you can't get saved by listening to Jesus, only listening to Paul. These are hyper viewpoints, extreme viewpoints, and one end of the spectrum to the other. Uh, I've had to deal with this for over the years. I've made a lot of videos about these things, but I have, uh, I can, it's easy to prove that the writings of John, the words of Jesus, the preaching of Peter, and the preaching of Paul is in absolute agreement. Amen. I can't say the same about James, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. A lot of my brethren disagree with me on this. You'd have to watch my playlist, James and Paul, The Shocking Facts, but I won't get sidetracked into that right now. But if you go to my playlist, I think uh, the playlist is titled um, Faith in Jesus, Not in Knowledge. It's either that playlist or Paul only isn't debunked. But I have a number of videos comparing the, te the preaching and the word of Jesus, John, Peter, and Paul. And you can see that they're in harmony. So um, it does really bother me that uh, these, uh, these these problems are they're ancient, but they're still current. Mm. Um, all right, uh, Brother Cripps, you didn't take a turn. Anything to say now? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The first thing I want to say, this is something that you told me early on when we first met, Brother Luke, and I don't expect you to uh, remember that, but you talked about this idea of hyper this and hyper that and that's what you said uh was annoying to you at the time and i'm glad to see that that hasn't changed of course i didn't expect that it would um but i used to uh take the time to argue with these hyper people i did i, I and, and uh sometimes i'll get all riled up and not not yelling and angry but just just like i can't believe that you attach the word hyper to anything and it totally distorts everything um it's so frustrating and one of the last, the very last arguments I had with a hyper person was a hyper dispensationalist that actually said to me in a, in a discussion on Messenger, she actually said to me that a person can only be saved by Paul's words. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. You're saying that no one can be saved by anything else in the Bible, including the words of Jesus. And she reiterated 
Yes, that's what I'm saying. The only thing that saves is is uh, the words of Paul, because uh, in her mind, Jesus gave Paul the authority, and and that meant the authority even under over uh, his words, because um, they they'd moved into a new dispensation after Christ's resurrection, and the, the dispensation of of Paul, Paul the the uh, now the only way to salvation. It's absolutely ludicrous. So I just wanted to to touch on that briefly, that I'm in full agreement with uh, what you said, Brother Luke, about the um, attaching the word hyper to anything, it, it distorts everything. Um, so I'm glad that we don't do that here. And the one last thing I'll say about that is um, for the for the guys in the chat room, you guys are all a part of this family that, that we have here, and I'm so happy to see that. Um, I, I don't stray away from these few channels that have these same people in the chats. Um, I, I can feel safe. I can talk. I can I can find encouragement, and I don't have to to sift through all this other garbage. And I've already done it. I've already I've already sifted through the garbage. I've sifted through the the false uh, doctrines out there, and um, I'm not called to that. I'm called to edify true brothers and sisters and people in the body. Um, and uh, to lift each other up because this is a this is a broken, fallen world, and we need each other so much. And I'm just I'm grateful for that. Amen, Jason. I I've said before, accusing an evangelist of not preaching against sin and guiding people's sanctification walk, uh, positional is done. But you know what I'm talking about. Experiential mm -hmm. is like accusing a math book of not teaching science. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And we here all have the same foundation. That's why we are here studying the scriptures and getting to the meat of scriptures, because all of us have drank the milk. We're growing in grace through the milk of the word. And now we are trying to eat some meat. We're not here to debate with people. We are happy to do that after the program if they are unclear on who Jesus is or what the gospel is, etc. But um, this is not the place to come in and try to argue foundational um, truths and agreements that this particular group has. Mm. All the people in the chat room, pretty much, are my brothers and sisters in Christ, as well as yours and Luke's. And we know that. So, uh, you know, we're, there, there's no need to even discuss those issues because... Uh, we're already saved. That's not a salvific issue. So if anybody wants to discuss these things, Matthias is the greatest guy in the world because he's willing to let unbelievers or people that believe another gospel come on his channel. And he's very patient. Mm -hmm. So maybe you should contact him or even any of us to help answer questions at that point. But it seems like they're here just to stir up trouble and make everybody wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I uh, I want to consider the hour uh, and the fact we did start late. Uh, normally, we don't want to go past uh, 11 or sometimes we go to 1130 Eastern time. So I want to consider that. So uh, I'd say in the next 10 minutes, I appreciate you even extend, extending it this long, uh, Brother Cripps. Oh, no problem for me. Okay. And, and I'm actually OK, Luke. I just took the ibuprofen. It's starting to come down now. Yeah. Okay, uh, so a few more verses, and let's plan on stopping at 11.30 Eastern time, okay, so that it's not too late for you. Um, all right, in the KJV, verse 10, and again, he saith, rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. Mm. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. Mm. Yeah. Hey. All right, Renee, you're feeling good. Go ahead. Knock it out, Renee. Yeah. I, uh, I love that the mystery is clearly that although everybody thinks that Israel, well, it wasn't set apart nation, but the purpose of it, was to be um, a holy nation so the Savior of the world could be born through. It was also to be keepers of the law of God, the, 
the the keepers of the law, you know, to um, what is what would be a good word, you know, to protect and to retain the law. Bearers or keepers are both good. Right. Uh, So if you think of something better, I I need it because I tried to explain it. I don't know how else to do it. (laughs) Uh, The Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written for this cause, I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again, he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Now, the good news here for the Gentile nations was not let's bring Israel's bondage of the law over to the Gentiles. They didn't even bother discussing the law with Gentiles. They preached Jesus according to the scriptures. They told them all the sin. You used to be in ignorance. You used to uh, worship idols, but God doesn't live there. He lives within man. He's very close to all of us. And he winked at your silliness of worshiping these things made with our own hands. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent, to change their mind from trusting in these Uh, dumb idols and trust in the living God. And uh, the good news is that eternal life is guaranteed. He's given it to you uh, as a free gift because God himself came in the flesh and paid whatever sin debt. A lot of the pagans believed like the Anubis thing that you had to outweigh, just like the Muslims do, believe that the good had to outweigh the bad. That's why some Muslims even count the steps they take on their pilgrimages. And, um, you know, that that was the good news that they were grafted into the promises given to Abraham, you know, and that we're all one new man, uh, the body of Christ. So um, let me get this verse. Oh, he said, again, he says, rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. Did you read 11 also? Uh, and 12. Okay. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles and loud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah says there shall be a root of Jesse. This is confirming Jesus came through the line of David. Jesse was David's father. And he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles in him shall the Gentiles trust. And that word is so important. If you go over to, let me read this to you real quick. Do you guys mind? No. Okay. I know which one it is. So give me a second. All right. Let me pull it up. So what's uh, important here is it says that we were the ones who first trusted in Christ. And that's what it means uh, when, he, when, when the, um, the pagan uh, guard, prison guard, uh, asked Paul and Silas, hey, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then you see that he continued to preach Jesus in the scriptures and what he had done for them. And when they heard the news, it was mixed with faith and the Holy Spirit baptized them into Christ. So it says, in whom ye also trusted. Because it says right here uh, in Romans, uh, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Here's the problem. Most professing Christians do not trust in Christ. They do not believe that he accomplished obtaining our eternal redemption. And, you know, I tried to say before, if, uh, if I already died with Jesus on the cross, how can I suffer the second death? That's what people don't get. So it says in whom he also trusted after that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And that's first Corinthians 15, one through four. It's the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus, according to the scriptures and whom also after that ye believed you were sealed with that Holy spirit of promise. So it is uh, synonymous. Believing is synonymous with trusting uh, the word in, in Greek coin Greek is uh, I think pistios, which means to entrust or to trust and to take one at its word, to have hope based on a statement someone makes. So uh, the hope we have is a sure hope. Uh, we know if God says that there, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin because Christ died once for all and we're perfected forever. It's Jesus plus nothing. Yeah. That's our salvation. And that is the good news. Uh, and it is the same gospel 
for both the Jew and the Greek. Yes. So there is no uh, different gospel for the Jews and the people get that really, really mixed up. There's lots of gospels in the sense of messages of good news. But this is the gospel of our salvation, Amen. the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. And uh, this is about trusting. I'm so glad that word trust, because in him do the Gentiles trust. Mm. Amen. Brother Cripps? I'll keep mine really, really short. Rejoice and celebrate, O Gentiles, along with his people. So uh, Renee talks about this a lot, uh, about... God not being done with uh, with his people, this should be more confirmation of that. He's not done. There are promises that were made that have not yet been fulfilled that will be fulfilled regardless of what anyone thinks. And when I say his people, I do not mean the residents of the, of the, uh, the uh, country of Israel. I mean God's, God's people, his people, not the ones that say they are, but aren't, but God's people. He's not done with them. And uh, so all of us Gentiles should rejoice, rejoice and celebrate. Um, that's a command. That's a command for us. And we definitely should. We've been grafted in. We've been because of the uh, because of his people being um, a switch three. I think it's switch 321 uh, was what's helping us think of a better word. Helping you, Renee. And they came up with the word guardians, guardians of the law, guardians of all the things um, that were uh, given to them to hold on to. And I just wanted to add to that, that uh, they're also uh, everything that happened with God's people were to allow the Gentiles to see the difference between all of what they believed and the difference between what uh, the one true God uh, wants from his people. And we definitely see that through scripture. We definitely see the difference. Um, of not having idols and all that, uh, uh, worshiping the one true God. So celebrate and rejoice, rejoice and celebrate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You yes. All of want to celebrate yes. the Savior, Jesus. Yeah. I'm a Gentile and I'm following those instructions. Mm. So, uh, well, be before I uh, go into these verses here uh, briefly, I'm going to. Uh, I want to acknowledge a little angstrom. Uh, um, you know, there's oftentimes we use a word or, or talk about a, a, a subject that is, uh, and some people are unfamiliar with it. Um, it's a little angstrom. Study it out on your own if you like, but I'll give you a couple of places to go uh, uh, for this subject of dispensationalism and hyper dispensationalism. Uh, the question about uh, dispensationalism. And, and and my major pet peeve of hyper dispensationalism, we've discussed it at great length in many many different venues like this. But if you go through the Sunday programs and look at the description box, uh, every Sunday we we probably answer an average of three or four or five questions. And I know it hasn't been that long ago; only a few weeks ago, uh, we've. Uh, uh, and, and this has happened several times. I'm sure we've talked about the subject of dispensationalism and what is it. So you can get the answer from Daniel, Matthias, Renee, and myself, and whoever else was on the panel on the day that we talked about dispensationalism. So I would suggest you go there. Uh, but particularly for hyper dispensationalism, uh, Little Ekstrom, and anybody else who's interested in it, uh, I put in a lot of effort to uh, do a teaching against hyper dispensationalism. It's titled Paul Onlyism Debunked. Uh, I hope you'll watch all of that and then you'll understand why it my, uh, I, I get fired up and very agitated every time I, we come to a verse that the hyper dispensationalists are using to pro promote their, their heresy. Mm. Uh, so please go there. Now yeah. regarding these verses here, um, it says, therefore, I praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Again, it says, rejoice and celebrate, O Gentiles, along with his people. Um, uh, remember, the church started for probably the first uh, uh, 30 years. Uh, it was almost entirely uh, Jews and, and Gentiles came in after the, after 10 years, Gentiles began to, to join. But then gradually over time, the ratio 
of almost all Jewish and little, very few Gentiles changed. And now it's almost entirely Gentiles, only a few people of a Jewish uh, background that have come to believe in Jesus as their Savior God. Uh, but, uh, and then it says in verse 11, and again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. Again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse. So the prophecies in the Bible showing the genealogy that, uh, that would uh, create the Messiah, the promised Savior. Uh, there's prophecy seeing, saying the Messiah would come from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Jesse, as is being referenced here, and David. Uh, so the, the mathematical probabilities of lining up all, all those, those possibilities is if you look at statistical probabilities, uh, it is mind-boggling. It's like one chance out of 10 to the 50th power with 50 zeros. I, I don't remember the numbers, but but it's astronomical. Uh, so this is one of the great proofs that the Bible is the inspired word of God when we look at these prophecies and, and uh, see that it, it's way beyond any lucky chance. And these are God telling us the future. Um, Okay, uh, we'll stop it after, uh, with the verse 12 and we can pick up with verse 13 next time. So because of the late hour here, let's try to take a minute to uh, uh, summarize our thoughts. Uh, Renee, will you go first? Sure, just as a fever starting to leave me. <laughs> yes, thank you. God. If you go another half hour, I will, but it's late where you are, so I don't- I'm Yeah, not... it's, it's pretty late to get my boy to sleep. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this chapter says a lot about us and our responsibility to others in the body. We are all one body people, all one body might be a finger or ear or nose <clears throat> and we all have different gifts, but we are one body. And what is most important is not making others wrong on every little thing and not enforcing our own freedoms and liberties on people that are still growing in grace. Uh, God is working on every person at a different pace. You know, maybe, you know, a lot of people think that God is going to take away, like my thing was they thought uh, that first thing would go would be the cigarettes and the drinking and the drugs. But what really was dealt with first was the heart condition of me being wounded because I was medicating myself. So he was getting to the root of the wound and letting me know that even in the flaws of my flesh, he still loved me and that my flesh had already died with Jesus when I received him and his payment for my sin and that he uh, would take my burdens and his yoke is easy and his burdens light. So we need to uh, bear each other's infirmities. You know, those weak in the faith, or, and I'll even extend it to someone that's struggling. Um, we need to help one another, not condemn and try to be right all the time. Jesus was so self-sacrificial. Mm. We should be exhibiting that kind of love for one another. Amen. You know, and I think that's important here mm. as we need to realize we are all one body. Hyper important. And yeah, you can't hate someone in the body because you hate yourself and you hate Jesus. Mm. Can't do that. No. I'm so glad we got it rolling tonight. I'm so glad. Okay. Thank you, Brother Cripps. Yeah. Um, lift each other up, edify each other, bear, bear, uh, bear the weaker among you. Uh, and, and weaker just meaning not being in the same place necessarily with the freedom that we have in Christ. Um, celebrate, <laughs> celebrate and rejoice all ye Gentiles, which uh, uh, I would consider as most of us. Uh, there, there may be someone out there that's not, but it um, doesn't matter because we're all in the same body. Um, whether people want to separate or not, they want to separate the, the um, Israelites or the Jewish people from the Gentiles and and you know claim somehow that the gentiles in heaven are going to be out in the courtyard while everyone that's uh 
of Israel is going to going to be in the, the the city itself, and that's a uh, there's just so many uh, things out there that are twisting of uh, a twisting and a misinterpretation of God's word, and it's so frustrating. Um, but again, coming in these uh, particular rooms with um, Church of the Turn of the Secure and a, a couple of other channels, that at least uh, in the chat that we have uh, unity and we have people trying to lift each other up, and it's so so precious. And it's so rare. It's so rare. And if you don't know that it's rare, go to go to any other. Just just pick a random Christian uh, YouTube channel, and go into the chat and see the difference briefly, and then then st step out of there as quick as possible and come back over here because it's just it's just amazing. Um, and I just want to uh, thank all the people in the chat. You guys are awesome, and I look forward to next week. And Renee, I'm glad you're feeling better. You you look uh, visibly, even visibly, you look like the the fever's not racking you. I felt bad for you when that when that thing hit you so hard. And uh, uh, but but God bless you. you just uh, push push through, and I'm glad you're feeling better. And good night to Jim Jim. And I hope he sleeps well. And I'm I'm just sorry I didn't get a chance to see my kitties. <laughs> oh, you got a private audience with them soon. Okay, good. Meow, I'll be back. Meow, yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, they okay. can't hear you? I, I wonder why they can't hear you. Uh, all right, let's let's. Uh, uh, Brother Matthias said that the um, no one can hear you except the panel here, so he asked us to pray for Daniel. Uh, I I don't know if it's just his his ongoing health issue or something different. The Lord knows. So everybody, please uh, tonight, let's all make an extra extra effort to uh, pray for Daniel's healing and blessings. And tell Daniel we were talking about him today. About some of the wonderful one-liners he has. Oh yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, I'll keep my summary very, very short. Uh, not so much about the content of the study, uh, but the uh, just the fact that it, it is able to happen. Uh, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> and thank you for uh, Jesus using Matthias to to rescue, come to the rescue, uh, brother. I'm so happy that you were. Uh, 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 paying attention, you were aware that there was a problem. I made six or seven attempts to get the program going. It failed every time. And uh, Matthias called me on the phone, and we worked uh, together to. Uh, we it was kind of like uh, duct taping uh, something together to try to figure out a way to make it work. And and Matthias figured out a, a way to do it. So I'm I'm very grateful, and I'm very very also grateful that Renee and. and and Brother Cripps uh, uh, were still able to participate, even though it was about a, an hour late getting started. Uh, so thank you for uh, being faithful and, 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 and participating in spite of all the difficulties. And, uh, I think it, uh, it, it turned out to be a wonderful study and a blessing to everybody. Uh, okay, so uh, don't forget, uh, join us on uh, Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time for our Sunday program for the Church of the Eternally Secure. And hopefully uh, the, the technical problems that I've had tonight, uh, uh, we'll figure out how to remedy that to get it, everything functioning normally again. Oh, yeah. but, uh, okay, if there's nothing else, thank you everybody for participating and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.